Okay, welcome Year 11s to this next video. Um, what I'm going to do in this one is take you through how we find the rule or the equation of a straight line, a linear line. So um, there's a few different ways that we can do this. Obviously, you can do it algebraically, do it by hand. Um, I'll show you uh, sort of how you how you can do that with a, a little bit of assistance from the calculator. But there's also another method that just uses the calculator itself. So I'm going to run through both of those with some examples. So first of all, to find the, the equation of a line, you do need a little bit of information, and that is that you need two coordinates that that particular line passes through. So it might be, say, the first point, uh, the coordinate 2, comma 3, so it passes through where x is 2, y is 3, and where, um, y, say, x is 4, y is 11. Now, I'm going to actually use those coordinates later on, but that's what I mean by two coordinates that the line passes through. Um, there's another situation you might come across, and that's where you're given the gradient of a line and just one coordinate. So if you've only got one coordinate, you do need to know another piece of information, and that is you need to know the gradient. So for example, you might be told that m equals 4, and the line passes through the point 2, 3. With just the, that information there, those two points, what you could do is find the equation of that line. First, I'll show you how do we do it with, with when we've got two coordinates. Now, just recall that the general form that we have for a linear equation is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So, effectively, what we're trying to do when we're trying to find the rule for an equation is we're trying to find what is the, the value of the gradient, so what is m, and what is c. Once we do that, once we know those two things, we can simply write out the rule y equals, insert your value of m, x plus insert the value of c. So it does make it a lot easier breaking it down and noticing that we are just effectively trying to find two things here. So the equation of the line that passes through these two coordinates. First of all, we need to work out what the gradient is. Now remember from previous lessons that the gradient is um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So basically the difference in the y values um, over the difference in the x values. So the rise over the run. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. You don't have to label them, but sometimes it makes it easier. Therefore, this formula becomes 11 minus 3 over 4 minus 2. 11 minus 3, that's 8. 4 minus 2, 8 on 2, that's equal to 4. So our gradient, m, is equal to 4. Now, knowing that y equals mx plus c, okay, so knowing this this rule here, this equation, this general form of the equation, knowing that m is equal to 4, and also knowing that we've got a couple of um, coordinate pairs, we can actually substitute what we know into this rule and we can work out what the y-intercept is from there. What I mean by that is, if we've got the general rule y equals mx plus c, I know that if I put a y-coordinate here and the corresponding x-coordinate, and I put in the gradient and the y-intercept, these two must be equal to each other. That's how an equation works, isn't it? So what I'm saying is if I've got the value of m, I'm going to substitute that here. That's multiplied by the x value. So let's take an x value that we know the line passes through. Passes through x is 2. And what is the y value at that point? The y value is 3. Oops. 3. So what I'm saying is this coordinate up here, 2, 3, I've substituted the x and the y value into this rule, y equals mx plus c. And what I can do from here is I can solve for c. So this is 3 equals 8 plus c. Therefore, c is equal to negative 5. Now, if you're not great with your algebra here, that's okay. What you can do is you solve on your calculator, so that's menu 3, 1, typing in the full equation and then a comma C to solve for C. But this one's quite easy to solve, so we've just done that by hand, and C is negative 5. So again, substitute one of the coordinates in. I could have used 4 and 11, that would work as well if I quickly do that now. So 4, 11, that would be Y equals 4 times 4 
plus c, so 11 equals 8 plus c. Oh, sorry, not 8. 16. Thinking in my head why that wouldn't work. There we go. And of course, c is negative 5. So you see, we do get the same answer. It doesn't matter which coordinate you use as long as your line um, passes through that point. Okay, finally, we want to write the equation in full. They're written in the form y equals mx plus c. Remember, our m was 4. There it is up there. And our c value, our y-intercept, was negative 5. We don't write plus negative 5. We write negative or minus 5. So there's our final answer. That's our equation of the line that passes through those two points. Now, finding the rule given the gradient one coordinate, well, effectively, if we're given the gradient, we are given, if I just zoom up a little bit, we're given this point here. So it means we wouldn't need to find the gradient. We wouldn't need the two coordinates, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We wouldn't need to do that step. So effectively, it saves us from doing one of these steps. That final step would be uh, taking the gradient that you've been given and using one of the points that you've been given one coordinate and the same the same thing that I've just done then substitute the values for x for y and for m into the y equals mx plus c equation and solve for c once you do that you can then f write the equation in full obviously in the, the correct form y equals mx plus c so that's how we do it by hand, and I will run through some examples of that shortly. Uh, before, though, before I do that, I want to show you how we can do it using the calculator. Okay, so when you've got two coordinates, so in this case, uh, just say I was given the coordinate 2, 1, and 4, 10 that my line passes through. What I can do is if you have a look at this screenshot here, is I create a list for my x coordinates and for my y coordinates. So I can do that here for you if you wish. If I just go up here, x and y. And if I just go back, so it's 2, 1 and 4, 10. So what I want to do is put in, there's one coordinate. So the x value is 2, y value is 1. And the other one was 4, 10. So 4, 10 like so. So we need to write them in like so. So um, your x and y pair, they must be written together or next to each other side by side as you can see here. Once you do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end, I'm going to um, add another tab to the calculator. So I press control I and I want to add this one, data and statistics. You'd be familiar with this one from when we did univariate data. I'm going to add my, my variables in. So along this horizontal axis is x and along the vertical axis is y. And you can see that your calculator will plot the two points. This is called a scatter plot. Now this final little step, which is going to give us the equation that passes through these two points. It's using a method, a statistical method called regression, which is fitting a straight line to data. And that's what we want. We're working with straight lines. So this, these steps that I go through, I'll just do it a little bit slower. We go number four for analyze, number six for regression, and then we select this one here, show linear mx plus b. So just the top one there. What you'll see is a straight line is drawn connecting to those two points, and the equation of that line is given to you. Here it is, y equals 4.5x minus eight. Notice I don't say the plus because I've noticed this is negative. I don't say plus negative eight. It's just minus eight. So that's my answer. That is my equation of that straight line. So it is relatively easy, isn't it? Once you get it, get these uh, coordinates, the, the two coordinates, coordinate pairs into your calculator, get it into data and statistics, obviously enter in the variables, connect with a straight line, and then select your show linear mx plus b. Um, show linear a plus bx, which is number two, that also works. Uh, the only difference is it'll give you your, um, your y-intercept first. It just reverses the order, the y-intercept and the gradient. Uh, that doesn't matter. Um, the equation is still the same. What I want to do is uh, these first 
three um, examples here, A, B, and C. I'm going to do that uh, using the first method I showed you, which is um, algebraically. So with these three, you'll notice the y-intercept is given for, for all three, which makes it a lot easier to find the equation. But I'm going to do it sort of that longer way just to show you the method that you would employ uh, if you were just given two points. So ignore the fact it's the y-intercept. Yes, we know that makes it easier to find the value of c, but I'm going to do it the long way just to help you out a little bit if you get uh, different coordinates. So for a, first of all, let's list our two coordinates that a passes through. I can see 0, 10 and 4, 1. Let's first find the gradient. m is going to be equal to 1 minus 10 over 4 minus 0. So this is 1 minus 10, negative 9, over 4. There's my gradient. I now need to substitute this into the rule and use one of the coordinates as well. So I'm going to use this first one, 0, 10. So the y value is 10. 10 equals, so this is our y equals mx plus c that I'm substituting into. This is the next step. 10 is equal to negative 9 on 4 times by the x value, which in this case is 0, plus c. So this means that 10 is equal to, this cancels out, that becomes 0. c is equal to 10, you can write it around that way if it makes it easier. Therefore, my rule is y equals negative 9 on 4x, so mx, plus 10, plus your c value. And that's a. For b, let's have a look at our coordinates. We have 0, 2, 4, 9. Let's first get the gradient. So m is equal to 9 minus 2 over 4 minus 0. So 9 minus 2 over 4, 7 over 4. You can leave it as a fraction. You don't need to convert it to a decimal. It's not absolutely necessary. Now using my y equals mx plus c rule, using one of my coordinates and the gradient, 2 is equal to 7 over 4 by the x coordinate, which is 0 plus c. So again, this is easy because this cancels out. C is equal to 2 and might just write it the correct way around. There we go. Therefore, y is equal to 7 over 4, x plus 2. Last one is c. And as you can see, we've got, passes through the origin, so one of our coordinates is 0, 0. And the other point is 5, 5. Okay. So, first of all, our gradient. 5 minus 0, 5 minus 0. That's 5 over 5. You can see our gradient is 1. Now, if we substitute, I might use this one this time. 5 is equal to 1 times 5 plus C. So that's substituting your x and your x and your y value and your gradient. So 5 is equal to 5 plus c. We can see that c is equal to 0. And that makes sense because, again, you can see just by looking at the graph, there's your y-intercept there. It's occurring at this point where y is equal to 0. So therefore, our rule is simply y is equal to x. Our gradient was 1, and we our, our y-intercept sorry is going through the origin. It's going through 0. Therefore, our rule is simply y equals x. Okay, that's how we do it by hand. Um, again, these, these particular examples, they were a little bit easier because the y-intercept was given to you on the graph anyway, but that is the process that I would go through if I was doing it by hand um, using the two coordinates that were given. We can also employ the calculator method, so that's what I'm going to do here. Let's start off with line A. First of all, let's just establish the coordinates that it passes through. So I've got 1, 10 and 3, 1. What we can do is open up our calculator. Now because I've already got this open, I'm just going to change these. So 1, 10. 
and I've forgotten the other one now. Three one. There's our coordinates. So one ten three one. The line passes through. If I go back to this one, all I have to do is sort of re-enter one of the coordinates, and it will fix it for us. So one ten and three one there they are and you'll notice that because I did this before it automatically changes the equation there it is y equals negative 4.5x plus 14.5 so y equals negative 4.5x plus 14.5 so there's our equation. Uh, you'll notice the calculator does give it to you uh, using decimals, and that's okay. Um, just round off to a couple of decimal places if that uh, if that happens, if that's the case. For B, uh, we've got the coordinates 3, 10, and 1, 0. So I'm going to put them into the calculator now. So 3, 10, and 1, 0. 3, 10, 1, 0. Zero. There we go. To the data and statistics page now. Uh, you'll notice it's, it has already done it, but I'll just fix it so you can see it. There we go. Just re-enter one of the variables if you can't see your points. And there's our rule there. Y equals 5x minus 5. Okay, just back to this page. 5x minus 5. There we go. Finally, you can see it is pretty quick once you get started with it. Um, 2, 1 is where C goes and 5, 10 is the second coordinate. So 2, 1 and 5, 10. 2, 1 and 5, 10. There they are there. Back to my data and statistics page. Enter your variables in. And there's my equation, y is equal to 3x minus 5. So you see it is relatively easy once you get the hang of it and it doesn't take too long. Um, so that is an option for you if you prefer it. Uh, make sure you do get lots of practice with it because there's no point in, in having that calculator um, and using that method if you're not doing it correctly. So thank you very much for listening to this video um, and I will see you in class.